Shalom, brothers and sisters. Two days ago, I posted on my community page um, the following, and I'm just going to read it word for word verbatim. Um, I was having doubts and second thoughts, but then a confirmation came to me after I posted this two days ago. Um, and I believe it's Yehoshua's way of telling me that I need to plant a seed. Um, on the following video that I watched, the link is right here. I'm going to play the first four or five minutes of the video. It's a longer video. Um, it's like well over 50 minutes. Um, but the confirmation that was shown to me in the video after I posted it on my community page, um, I watched it. I was going to expose it. I was going to try to plant a seed. Um, but then I had second thoughts. I thought, no, it's just going to be like talking to a brick wall. Okay. You know what I'm saying? This great deception really is a nightmare. Um, I cannot even believe that it happened, you know, back when the Greek translator was used by the enemy in 70 AD to replace the groom and the bride with the confusing term bridegroom. Um, when Matthew's 28 chapters was translated from Aramaic into Queen Greek, uh, the year 70 AD, the same year that Herod's temple, the second temple was destroyed. Um, and so two days ago, I wrote the following on my community page. Um, you can plant hundreds of seeds, but if someone quenches the Ruach HaKadosh and despises prophecy, there's absolutely nothing true Bereans can do but just pray. 1 Thessalonians 5 proves that people with hardened hearts, Hebrews 4, 7, quench the Holy Spirit and despise Bible prophecy. Yeshua HaMashiach is mighty to save. He came to seek and save those who are lost. If people despise the original parable of the ten virgins and all of Psalm 45 in correlation with Revelation 18, 19, 21, and 22 concerning the bride, the lamb's wife, who is one Proverbs 31 woman, they need a ton of prayer. You can drag a horse to water, but you cannot force the horse to drink from that water. There is a reason why John Mark wrote in Mark 10, 15, it is a must to accept the kingdom of heaven like a small child. Um, only the meek will inherit the earth, Matthew 5, 5, um, Psalm 147. I was going to expose another video where someone labels the lamb's wife as the entire body of believers. We all know this is completely false when examining the original parable of the ten virgins and Psalm 45. Elohim has put on my heart 1 Peter 4, that because of this great deception regarding the mistranslation of Matthew's gospel, the righteous will be scarcely saved. Revelation 3.10, Luke 21.36, from the hour of temptation. Um, I've planted hundreds of seeds with these videos for well over two years now on YouTube. Um, you know, I, I posted my very first video, um, which is footage of my grandmother's 1952 Bible, which includes the bridegroom and the bride in Matthew 25, 1, and the Aramaic Bible in plain English New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs, which talks about the five wise virgins going out to meet the groom and the bride. Um, and yeah, I my very first video was uploaded in August of 2022. I've been planting many seeds for well over two years now, and... um. I don't know if Lynn knows about my ministry or not. I don't. I know that she's not um, subscribed. Like this specific account. When I, I'm going to show you when I open this link up, I'm going to show you what um, her ministry looks like. You know, and no, she's not a wolf in sheep's clothing that I know of. But really, you know, this great deception, it angered Yahweh and Yeshua. I can only imagine the conversations that Yeshua HaMashiach and Father Yahweh and our comfort of the Ruach HaKadosh had in 70 AD, minutes, hours, weeks after the Greek translator replaced the groom and the bride in Matthew 25, 1 with the confusing term bridegroom. I mean, I know that my grandfather who went home in 2007, okay, to be with the Lord, my grandpa John Bloom, um, and then my grandma Pauline, um, my mother's mother, her 1952 Bible had uh, the bridegroom and the bride in Matthew 25, 1, okay? My grandma Pauline 
asked a Pentecostal pastor, well, if you say that the Lamb's wife is all body of believers that make up the entire body of Christ, then what is the difference between the bride and the virgins in Matthew 25, 1? And she showed him her 1952 Bible. And he never got back with her, which he did audibly, but he couldn't give her a straight answer is what I mean. And so that was a Pentecostal pastor. Um, she had that conversation before I was born in 77. Back after she left the Catholic Church in 74 in Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, yeah, it was First Christian Assembly of God in Cincinnati, Ohio. The pastor back then um I'm not going to give the man's name because I know he wouldn't appreciate me giving his name. It's a different pastor now, but yeah, the pastor back in the early 70s, um, yeah, you know, my grandma Pauline, uh, yeah, she asked him about the difference between the bride and the virgins in Matthew 25, 1. You know, um, my family has a history with this. And so, yeah, you know, I've planted hundreds of seeds with these videos. Um, for well over two years now on YouTube, um, going all the way back to August of 2022, which is when I, I posted my very first YouTube video. If people despise prophecy, they need to re-examine the original parable of the ten virgins and 1 Thessalonians 5. It says to not despise prophesy, um, to not despise people who prophesy correctly, okay? And it says not to quench the Ruach Hagadesh, the Holy Spirit, okay? You know, the Holy Spirit wants us on fire for, the, for Adonai Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, okay? We are to not be lukewarm or cold. We are supposed to be boiling hot. We're supposed to be on fire for the Lord, okay? We are not supposed to quench the Holy Spirit, okay? That's a, a biblical fact in 1 Thessalonians 5. So, and then I wrote, pray for Lynn Liaz and many ministries who are loving to lie. Even if they're not knowingly lying, we still have to pray for them because the tribulation is going to be horrific. I mean, it's going to be terrible. I mean, I'm going to say it again. I've said it before in at least two different videos. You know, the flood that broke out 1,656 years after creation, um, that's going to look like children drowning in a kid pool compared to what's about to happen. I mean, when Iran drops a bomb on the caldera of Yellowstone, literally fulfilling um, Isaiah 13, 17 through 19, and Jeremiah 51, 25, which is where Yeremiah talks about the destructive mountain, okay? That's Yellowstone, super volcano. It's going to be, it's going to destroy all of Western civilization. And I know Lynn Leaz, she lives on U.S. soil. Um, I know she does, you know. I don't care if you live in Greenland, Iceland, Canada, Alaska, North America. I don't care where you live. I don't care if you live in the bottom tip of South America. If you live in a Western nation, that nation is going to be destroyed. It, it's a biblical fact. Just read Isaiah 13, read Isaiah 47, read Revelation 18, 8 through 10, and Jeremiah 51, 25, which is, in fact, Yellowstone Supervolcano. And so um, I'm just going to go through and read the charts that I posted on my community page under this post. And then I'm going to play the first five minutes of her 50-something minute long video. And I'm going to show you what Yehoshua showed me. Okay, so my question to people like Lynn Leahs and other ministries, what is the difference? Because this is from the first century Peshitta manuscripts. If you don't believe me, um, go to your local library. I encourage you to buy the Aramaic Bible in plain English New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs. I encourage you to research where they get their information from. It is from the first century Peshitta manuscripts, the earliest known manuscripts on planet Earth um, that they can find. Okay. And so, yeah, it was in fact initially written in Aramaic and translated into Koine Greek in 70 AD, all 28 chapters of Matthew's gospel. And so I'm going to read Matthew 9, 15, Matthew 25, 1, 
Mark 2, 19 through 20, Luke 5, 34, 35, and John 3, 29 from the Aramaic Bible in plain English. Matthew 9, 15, And Yeshua said to them, How can the children of the bridal chamber fast? As long as the groom is with them, but the days are coming when the groom will be taken from them, and then they will fast. Matthew 25, 1, Aramaic Bible in plain English, Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. Mark two nineteen through 20, Aramaic Bible in plain English. Yeshua said to them, Are the children of the bridal chamber able to fast as long as the groom is with them? No, but the days will come when the groom will be taken from them. Then they will fast in those days. Luke five thirty four thirty five Aramaic Bible in plain English. But he said to them, You cannot make the children of the bridal chamber fast as long as the groom is with them, but the days come when the groom will be taken from them, and then they will fast in those days. John three twenty nine Aramaic Bible in plain English. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and listens for him rejoices with great joy because of the voice of the bridegroom. Therefore this my joy, behold, it is full. And so the next picture I posted. Um, obviously, the five wise virgins who do go out to meet the groom and the bride, um, yeah, they are her companions, and the bride mentioned in Matthew 25, 1, um, yeah, um, the bride mentioned in Matthew 25, 1, she is the daughter of the king, prophesied about in Psalm 45, verse 9 and verse 13. The king of kings, Yeshua HaMashiach, he is allowed to have a queen. Esther 2, 17 points to Psalm 45, 9. Um, Esther is, in fact, a foreshadow of the Lamb's wife, his queen. Actually, I can't blow this up. Okay, so Revelation nineteen sixteen, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Psalm 45, verse 9 through 14, King James Version. King's daughters are among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand is stand the queen and gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy lord, and worship thou him. And the daughters of Tyre shall be there at the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony with a gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. And, you know, when she gets married to the king of kings, she will not only wear her wedding dress woven with the gold of Ophir, but she will wear the Song of Solomon 7-1 wedding shoes. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter! The joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. And so... Um, I know that he put on my heart Proverbs twenty two twelve. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthrows the words of the transgressor. Psalm 31, verse 6 and verse 18. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. The righteous, including the bride and the five wise virgins, who know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, and so we know that in order to understand the ABCs of salvation, you have to connect John 3, 16 to John 1, 14 to Luke 24, 44 through 45 to Isaiah 55, 11 to 2 Timothy 2, 9. John 3, 16, King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 1, 14, KJV, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And because Yeshua the Messiah is the word made flesh, obviously he will fulfill all scripture written about him. Luke 24, 44 through 45, King James Version, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Um, and this fully correlates with what Isaiah the prophet wrote in Isaiah fifty five eleven. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. And this is why Paul wrote to Timotheus in Second Timothy two nine uh, that the word of God really is not bound. Um, you can't wrap chains around all of the original parable of the ten virgins. 
and all of Psalm 45. You just can't do that and tell him he's not allowed to fulfill biblical marriage to one Proverbs 31 woman. You know, his wife who hath made herself ready. Revelation 19, 7 through 9. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. It does not say themselves. And to her, not them, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints, plural. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they, more than one person, which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And so this is what I posted two days ago. And after I posted it, um, Joseph Aquaviva, I subscribed to his channel, um, Yes, he does believe in a simple gospel, um, but he is humble in many ways. You know, he has a family and he's a caring family man and he cares about the Lord, you know, and, and no, we're, we're not all going to agree on everything. Um, you know, while we see through a dark glass dimly, while we're waiting for our blessed hope, we're not going to agree on everything. But what he posted on his community page a day ago, um, I believe it's a confirmation from Adonai Elohim. Um, you cannot be thin-skinned in your calling. You will be gossiped about, severely betrayed, stolen from, falsely accused, befriended, and then mocked, left out, etc. Keep your eyes on Jesus and allow God to fight your battles. Your assignment is not for the weak. And no, it's not for the weak. So I knew that this was for me, especially... Um, yeah, and I wrote confirmation. Yeah, and so, yeah, I had to like it. But, yeah, right now, as of today, he has 376 likes on that post. But when I liked it, and this was after I posted this, okay, that I discovered this. And I believe it's a confirmation from the Lord. I was the person, I was the 122nd person to like this post, okay? And I'm going to show you a screenshot um, bear with me one second, and I'm going to show you what he showed me, and then I'm going to play the first five minutes of Lynn's video, which the Lord, this is another confirmation from the Lord. He opened my eyes up, and he said, look at the timing, and I knew that still small voice, and I'm going to show people what he showed me, and so after I posted this, um, I saw this just pop up out of nowhere, and I knew it was from the Lord, and I was the 122nd person to like this post at the time, okay? And um, I took a screenshot of it. I'm going to show people the screenshot in about um, five seconds. And so, yeah, um, I knew that it was a confirmation because Noah entered the ark at the age of 600. Psalm 122 is the 600th chapter of the KJV Bible, okay? And um, we know that Lamech died at 777 years of age, five years before the flood, okay? And um, um, Lamech died at 777 years of age, five years before the flood, at the back when Noah was 595 years of age. Then five years after Lamech's death, um, Noah entered the ark at the age of 600. Psalm 122 is the 600th chapter of the KJV Bible, okay? And I was the 122nd person at the time to like this post. And so I, I knew it was a confirmation because I have charts, and I'm going to go over those charts right now um, with people before I play the first five minutes of Lynn's video where she talks about how we are the lamb's wife. We are the bride. And it's not we. <laughs> I know this is a large pill to swallow, Lynn, um, but I'm doing this because I care. Uh, really? <laughs> um, I know this is a major wrench thrown into so-called Christianity, but please, I'm begging you, um, you know, this is the great deception. This is the strong delusion of Isaiah 66.4. Okay, and it all points to Hebrews 4, 7. You know, he doesn't want you to harden your hearts. Okay, so bear with me one second, brothers and sisters. Okay, so this is a screenshot. I couldn't get the whole post in, but I took a screenshot with my smartphone. And yeah, um, yeah, I you see how right here I was the 122nd person to like this post. 
at the time, okay? And at the time, he posted it two hours, like two hours after he posted it, I was the 122nd person to like it. And Noah, Noah um, entered the ark at the age of 600. Psalm 122 is the 600th chapter of the KJV Bible. My mom's address numbers is 122 um, in Kentucky. And so, yeah, I mean, this is a huge confirmation. So back like two hours after he posted this on his community page, I was the 122nd person to like it. We know that two people are better than one. He posted it two hours ago. Um, at the time, well, he posted it days ago, but, you know, at the time when I found it, he posted it two hours, and then two hours later, I found it. And so, yeah, you know, you cannot be thin-skinned in your calling. You will be gossiped about, severely betrayed, stolen from, falsely accused, befriended, and then mocked, left out, etc. Keep your eyes on Jesus and allow God to fight your battles. Your assignment is not for the weak. And I knew that, that pertained to me, especially knowing that at the time I found this, it was just two hours after he posted it um, a day ago, and I was the 122nd person to like the, the post. And so, yeah, you know, it's imperative to come out of institutionalized Christianity. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, really the message has been lost. And I know that there are two different types of pastors. There are pastors that love to lie, Revelation twenty two fifteen. But there are just many pastors that just perish for lack of knowledge. And when they find out about the great deception, they are in a state of shock. I mean, really, they are, you know, and so I just feel led to read Revelation 18, 4 and 5. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. The son of man um, is come to seek and save the lost, Luke nineteen ten. You know, we are to pray without ceasing for those that are trapped in institutionalized Christianity. And so the reason why I want to mention about 122, we know that, you know, obviously in 70 AD, the groom and the bride was replaced with the confusing term bridegroom. And the original parable of the 10 virgins talks about the groom and the bride separate from uh, the virgins, her companions, um, bridesmaids in some of your modern translations. Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to 10 virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. And so I know that following the rapture, it will be a time of Jacob's trouble, but Jacob will be saved out of it. Um, as proven in Jeremiah 30, verse 6 through 7, it will also be the time of the heathen, as proven in Ezekiel 30, verse 3. The heathens who will fulfill um, Psalm 2, why do the heathens rage and imagine a vain thing? Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of protestings when they see the Lamb's wife, when they see her light shine inside the holy city, the New Jerusalem. Um, you know, he's the king of kings and he's going to have a queen. And according to Malachi 4, you know, he is likened as the sun of righteousness. When the sun shines its solar rays on the moon at night, that's what gives the moon its glow. And she is likened as the moon in Song of Solomon chapter 6, verse 8 through 10. You know, there are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number, virgins too many to count. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only daughter of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bare her. The daughter saw her and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. And then Solomon in verse 10 talks about how her complexion will be that of the moon. That's why John wrote in Revelation 21, verse 9 through 11, that her light will always shine in the holy city of the New Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? And so that that's a biblical fact. And so... Yeah, we have to pray. It's not a salvation issue unless you are knowingly lying. Um, but then it's a heart issue, okay? So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of um, Gentiles um, fulfilling exactly what Yeremiahu wrote in Jeremiah 16, 19 through 21, which correlates with what Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 29, 24. Uh, Jeremiah 16, 19 through 21. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know mine hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. 
And then Isaiah clearly wrote um, in Isaiah 29, 24, they also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. And while, you know, people learn sound doctrine, there will be many protestings. Um, people that are going to fulfill uh, Psalm 2, okay? While he rules and reigns with a rod of iron for a thousand years with the help of his queen, his wife. And so... The reason why I think it's a confirmation is because um, for quite some time, I've had this chart. I don't even know how many years I've had this chart. I remember creating this on Be Funky Photo Editor. From Matthew 25 to 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 13 um, next. Um, it is 122 inclusive chapters. Psalm 122 is the 600th chapter of the KJV Bible. Noah was 600 when he entered the ark. Matthew 24 proves that the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. So from Matthew 25 in the KJV Bible to 1 Corinthians 13, talking about how their love will never end, it'll be true love. It'll be the greatest love story in all of human history. Um, 122 inclusive chapters. Yehoshua and his wife will have a love that will never end. Um, and so, yeah, you know, Song of Solomon 8, 7, you know, makes clear, many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. And so I know that this alignment, it proves that, you know, I'm... <laughs> Yehoshua wants me to expose the first five minutes of this video in a nice way, you know, just to plant a seed. And so I would like to read 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. Okay. Um, okay. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. True love will never end. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Okay? And so I want to um, show everybody my one image. 1 Corinthians thirteen thirty. So now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. True love will never end. And so the fact that from Matthew 25 to 1 Corinthians 13, um, it is 122 inclusive chapters in the KJV Bible. You know, in Psalm 122 is the 600th chapter of the KJV Bible, the age of Noah when he entered the ark. You know, only eight people were saved from the flood. Um, and so I know that, um, yeah, it's unfortunate that the mistranslation occurred well over 1953 years ago, but it is what it is. We have to get around this, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, you know, we know that the bride and her companions, they're all mentioned in Psalm 45, verse 13 and 14. It's unfortunate that people want to turn their 
face away from this, but it's going to be the greatest two events in human history, the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony and the marriage supper of the Lamb celebration. And so, yeah, the fact that I was the 122nd person to like this post at the time, two hours after he posted it on his community page, I knew that it pointed to two being better than one. Um, and I knew it was a confirmation from the Lord that I need to plant a seed about Lynn Liaz's video. So I'm going to play the first five minutes of her video and I'm going to show you what Yahweh showed me. Bear with me one second. Okay, and so I'm going to show everybody, it's a 59 minute video, but um, I'm going to play the first couple of minutes and show you in the transcript that's time stamped what Yahweh and Yeshua HaMashiach showed me okay and so I'm gonna I'm gonna play the first couple of minutes first and then I'm gonna explain I'm gonna go back to the transcript and explain what Elohim showed me I'll be back in in just a few short minutes Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking play. Thank you for being interested to find out what I want to share with you. And I hope you'll listen to this whole message. It's very important because it's about love. And love is probably one of the most important things in the entire Bible. God, after all, is love. But we know that in the end, the Bible says that love grows cold. And I can see that myself. I'm sure many of you can all over the internet. You have a major spirit of offense, which I'm sure has taken hold of all of us at some point in time. It's a very nasty spirit. You have condemnation, judgment, hatred, arguing, bickering, coldness everything. I see it all the time. In fact, a lot of alleged Christians today believe it's their job to be the internet police and to go and condemn everybody for everything they do, everything they say, but yet those people don't take the time to look at themselves. They're too busy condemning everyone else. And let me just tell you, that's not our job. We are to judge the fruit but as believers, we are supposed to have a spirit of love, and we never just go to somebody and condemn them or cast judgment on them. That's not what we're supposed to do. If most of us did what we're supposed to do, we're all called to teach. We are all called to be disciples, because every time you tell someone the message of Jesus, you are teaching. Okay, and in order to do that, you need to make sure you know the truth first. And we don't teach people by condemning them. And that is not a spirit of the Lord. Okay? Now, I am not a believer in this wishy-washy, watered-down, false love Jesus stuff. So don't get me wrong. But we're not supposed to be condemning hateful people. We push people away when we do that. So, anyways, let's get to the point here about love. So in this conversation, we're going to have to go back to the Old Testament. We're going to discuss your ancient Hebrew wedding and betrothal process. Actually, I said the opposite, the betrothal and wedding process. We're going to look at some of those things because that's really important for us to understand. And we're also going to talk about what is the number one things that is expected of a wife because we are the bride of Christ. So there are quite a few things that that entails, but I have picked out just a few of the most important points to discuss with you. So we'll look at those, and let me just grab my notepad actually real quick so I can tell you. So how does a wife love her husband? Number one, love is obedience or yielding to. We know Jesus even said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, you will keep my commandments. Number two, service or serving. Think about in Genesis, God made the woman to be the man's helpmate. Number three, 
fear or respect. Deep reverence and respect. Number four, praise and adoration. Well, we can see that in the word suitable in Genesis chapter 2, where God is talking about making the woman for the man. He wants to give him a helper that is suitable for him. If you look at the root of the root of the root, it says praise and adoration and also declaring. Bearing fruit, bearing fruit. All right, you have the whole consummation process, which we're going to talk about here in a second. And what does the bride do? The bride gives the man children. She bears fruit. And number six, faithfulness. Faithfulness. Okay, so those are the most important six things I thought of. And then we know the husband provides for his bride. He cares for her, provides for her needs, and loves her. Remember? Okay, and so what he has showed me, the consummation in 417 at the 4 minute 17 second mark, time stamped. The consummation is actually in the book of Daniel, and the consummation takes place in the bridal chamber mentioned in Matthew 9:15, Mark 2:19 through 20, Luke 5:34-35 and John 3:29. After the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony is finished under the huba, Yeshua and his wife, they will go to the bridal chamber and they will consummate their marriage by becoming one flesh. Okay, the bed in Hebrews 13:4 um the the bed which is undefiled okay um that bed will be in the bridal chamber that chamber is talked about in Joel chapter 2 um you know the 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 bride will come out of her closet um the bridal chamber is where they consummate their marriage following the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony okay and then when that's finished he will return from the wedding in the second or third watch and then the rapture will take place that's a biblical fact according to Luke 12:36 through 38 and so but what he also showed me is that um if you go back we know that there are a total of 260 chapters of the New Testament within the King James Version Bible. Revelation 22 is the 260th chapter of the New Testament. Okay. Um, if you go back um, where she says we are the bride. Okay. Right here at the 239 minute mark. Um, it says word for word, talk about what is the number one things that is expected of a wife, one wife, okay, his wife who hath made herself ready, it does not say themselves, okay, 239, the 239th chapter of the New Testament would be Revelation chapter 1, where John makes clear um, that many people will wail, Many people will be in anguish and in despair when the spirit and the bride audibly say, come. Okay, and I'm going to go through the slides um, in a minute. But the 239th chapter of the New Testament within the King James Version Bible would be Revelation 1, where in verse 7, Yohanan makes clear that every eye will see him and, you know, and, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Okay, when he returns, he's going to come back quickly. That's Revelation 22, verse 7, verse 12, and verse 20. The spirit and the bride will say, come to the five wise virgins of today's society. Um, fulfilling Revelation 22, 17, and Matthew 25, 1, original Aramaic version. And from Matthew 25, 1 to Revelation 22, 17, it is 7,089 inclusive verses. 7089, according to Strong's Hebrew Concordance, means to be in anguish and in despair. And so then when we go to the 248 time stamped um, line, where it says 248, because we are the bride of Christ. So there are quite a few things 
that that entails, but I have picked out just a few of the most important points to discuss. The 248th chapter of the New Testament would be Revelation chapter 10. 10 means completeness of order. The mystery of Revelation 10, 7 would be the earthly identity of the bride of Christ. Her identity is to remain hidden or veiled. Okay, Rebecca is a foreshadow. And when I saw the 239 and the 248 mark, where, and this is the only time in this entire video where she talks about the wife, the, the, the lamb's wife. Talk about what is the number one things that is expected of a wife, 239, because we are the bride of Christ, so there are quite a few things that that entails, but I have picked out just a few of the, the most important points to discuss. Okay, there is no we. There is a she. She hath made herself ready. Okay, it does not say themselves. In Ephesians 5.25, the church is referred to as an it, the entire body of believers. An actual wife of one husband in Ephesians 5.33 is referred to as a she and a her proving that the lamb's wife is one woman. So I have to go through and to finish this up, I have to point out the 239 and the 248 pointing to the 239th chapter of the New Testament, Revelation 1, and the 248th chapter of the New Testament, Revelation 10, talking about the mystery of God. Okay, Sir Isaac Newton made commentary on the mystery of Revelation 10, 7, and he clearly wrote that there would be a group of people, a group of men, who would insist on a literal interpretation of the scriptures of Revelation in the midst of much clamor and opposition in the last days. Sir Isaac Newton wrote that when he wrote commentary on the mystery of Revelation 10, 7. Okay, and Revelation chapter 10 would be the 248th chapter of the New Testament within the King James Version Bible. It's not a coincidence, people. And so I'm going to go through and just go through a couple more slides to finish this off. Um, I pray that Lynn Leaz comes to a knowledge of the truth and be set free indeed. Um, Yeshua HaMashiach, he came to seek and save which that is lost. Uh, bear with me one second, brothers and sisters. And so we know that the bride, um, she goes up in the first watch of the night when she is unveiled. This is the apocalypse unveiling. Um, when Yeshua HaMashiach cries out to her, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Um, and when you calculate the exact wording of Song of Solomon 2.10 in the King James Version Bible, in simple gematria, substituting letters for numbers like A1, B2, M13, Y25, Z26, um, this exact verse would total 686. The bride and her companions would obviously be the opposite of briars and thorns. Um, briars and thorns are mentioned in the 686th chapter of the KJV Bible, which would be Isaiah 7. Um, you know, where in verse 23 through 25, you know, during the millennial reign, briars and thorns will be rejected. That's why it is written in Hebrews 6, 8, but that which bear thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Okay, and so when the bride is removed off the planet, when she sees her blessed hope come to pass, um, you know, he will propose to her in the night sky and... After she accepts his proposal, they will kiss in the night sky. If you're outside, you'll be able to see it. Um, and then after that is finished, the spirit and the bride will say, come to the five wise virgins of today's society. Okay. The spirit of the bride will say, come. Everyone who hears this should also say, come. All who are thirsty may come. They can have the water of life as a free gift if they want it. Um, and so, yeah, the Holy Spirit and the one woman bride, they will audibly say, come at the end of the age of grace. How many people will get left behind when the spirit of the bride say, come? 686. Many people will wail, Revelation 1-7, fulfilling exactly what John wrote in the 239th chapter of the New Testament, um, which is Revelation 1 in verse 7. Many people will be in anguish and in despair, you know. And so the timing of that video... <laughs> Really, it's not a coincidence. And so, um, yeah, and so 
the bride and her companions, once they are removed off the planet in the first watch of the night, the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony will take place. And then after all of that is finished and after they consummate their marriage in the bridal chamber, um, yeah, he will return from the wedding in the second or third watch, literally fulfilling Luke twelve thirty six through 38. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants and this know that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through and so he will return from the wedding in the second or third watch it's a biblical fact that the daughter of tyre will be at the psalm 45 wedding ceremony with a gift okay and also matthew mark luke and john will be at the wedding okay and the bridal chamber um, mentioned in Matthew 9, 15, Mark 2, 19, Luke 5, 34, and John 3, 29. That's where the groom and the bride consummate their marriage, okay? After the entire ceremony is finished under the hoopah and the shamayim. She will wear her wedding dress woven with the gold of Ophir, you know, and I can only imagine what Yeshua will look like. Oh my goodness, he's going to be the most gorgeous groom on the planet. <laughs> so, yeah, and so, yeah, and then after, like, when he returns from the wedding, the Psalm 45 wedding, the rapture will take place, and then the marriage supper of the Lamb celebration will occur. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, one woman, hath made herself ready. It does not say themselves. And to her, not them, was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they, more than one person, which which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true things of God. And we know that when he rules and reigns with a rod of iron for a thousand years, his wife, her light will always shine inside the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Um, okay, so I'm going to read Revelation 21, verse 9 through 11. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Um, okay. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her, her light, not their light, not its light, her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. Okay. And so we know that the five wise virgins who do go out to meet the groom and the bride, they really are the meek of Matthew 5.5. 5. And from Matthew 5.5 5 to Matthew 25.7, it is 777 inclusive verses. They know nothing is too hard for Adonai Elohim. Um, as proven in the 777th chapter of the KJV Bible, which is Jeremiah 32. Um, they know that he will fulfill biblical marriage to one Proverbs 31 woman. And, you know, Lynn Lea, she mentions about the consummation. Um, yeah, you know, the bridal bed that is mentioned not only in Hebrews 13, 4, but also in Song of Solomon. Um, Song of Solomon talks about the bride's shoes in Song of Solomon 7, the shoes that she will wear when she wears her wedding dress woven with the gold of Ophir, mentioned in Psalm 45, 13. And it also talks about the color of the bedspreads. Um, their bed will be green. You know, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Um, and um, the tribe of Judah on the Levite breastplate is represented by a really beautiful minty emerald okay and so their bedspread will be green according to son of solomon scriptures the same bed that is mentioned in hebrews 13 4 marriage should be honored by everyone and every marriage should be kept pure between husband and wife the the, the marriage bed is undefiled okay is what the scriptures say and so yeah you know the consummation will occur in the bridal chamber mentioned in Matthew 9:15, Mark 2:19, Luke 5:34 and John 3:29.
okay? And so, yeah, you know, we have to pray because he wants a very Jewish wedding. He really does. And he is allowed to fulfill all scripture written about him. That includes biblical marriage to one Proverbs 31 woman. Um, and if people don't like that, then, you know, huh, they're not prepared for what's about to happen. You know, the bride, her identity is to remain a mystery prior to the apocalypse unveiling. That's Revelation 10, 7. And so, yeah, you know, I don't think her video is a coincidence with the timing. Um, and it's now 49 minutes. Um, this ends this um, update. And um, I hope and pray we fly home soon when the Spirit and the Bride say come. You know, um, all of us that are members of the Ecclesia Philadelphia, you know, all of the five wise virgins of today's society, um, it's important that the five wise virgins accept the kingdom of Adonai Elohim like a small child. Obviously, they will. But while we still have time, it's imperative that the five wise, knowing who they are, you know, plant seeds and pray the Ruach HaKadosh waters the seeds. You know, um, people like Lynn, they are quenching the Ruach HaKadosh, who guides true believers into all truth and shows them things to come. That applies to the five wise. The five foolish, their oil lamps are not completely full. You know, they are quenching the Holy Spirit, and they despise Bible prophecy. And so this ends this update, and I hope and pray we all see our blessed hope of Titus 2.13 soon. Shalom.